Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and this is a special surgeon question and answer session all about the top five considerations for mitral valve surgery patients. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Michael Acker and Dr. Michael Ibrahim, two leading mitral valve surgeons from Penn Medicine in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. During their extraordinary careers, Dr. Acker and Dr. Ibrahim have performed thousands of mitral valve operations, including mitral valve repairs and mitral valve replacements. Hi, Dr. Acker. Great to see you again. Great to see you, Adam. Hey there, Dr. Ibrahim. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for having us, Adam. Dr. Acker, the first consideration we want to talk about is all about symptoms. And it's often confusing for those patients who actually have no symptoms, but have severe mitral valve disease. Is it advisable for patients who are asymptomatic to have mitral valve surgery? In fact, Adam, it actually is. Uh, we've known now for, uh, I guess, around 15 years that patients with severe mitral regurgitation do better with successful mitral valve repair than just following them without any intervention. What we know is that mitral valve regurgitation in someone who's completely asymptomatic and with a normal heart at the beginning can go on to develop heart failure. It's important that we operate when your heart is strong and not wait until it's developed heart failure. And with today's techniques and with our known great outcomes of mitral valve repair, it is absolutely advisable for you to have mitral valve repair while asymptomatic prior to the development of symptoms. Dr. Acker, I've got to ask this follow-up. What potential damage can be caused to the patient's health if they wait too long to have surgery if they're asymptomatic? Severe mitral regurgitation does lead to deterioration of your cardiac condition. And that can be obvious heart failure, it can be uh, evidence of pulmonary hypertension. It can be the development of atrial fibrillation. And all these things can occur subtly. And you want to make sure that you have your mitral valve surgery before they happen. Dr. Ibrahim, for the second consideration, it can also be a little confusing for patients specific to surgical techniques, either a replacement or a repair for the mitral valve that's diseased. I'm curious to know, why is mitral valve repair the preferred treatment for mitral regurgitation? So for some patients who don't have repairable valves, mitral valve replacement is a good option. When we repair a, a mitral valve, what we're doing is restoring natural um, mitral valve structure, restoring the mitral valve to what it was when you were born, which is based on your own amazingly complex and sophisticated sets of cells uh, that we cannot replicate with an artificial valve made in a factory. It produces important clinical results like improved survival compared to replacement, uh, improved valve performance, and importantly, freedom from valve-related complications, blood clots on the valves, bleeding from blood thinners, and so on. And so if your valve is leaking and can be repaired, mitral valve repair is going to result in significant improvements in the length and quality of your life. Dr. Acker, back to you for the third consideration. Why is it important for patients to research their potential surgeons and cardiac centers? It's important because mitral valve repair is really a operation that's done best in centers that have a lot of experience uh, with mitral valve surgery. Data from the SDS suggests that the majority of heart surgeons across America actually do five operations on the mitral valve per year. That's it. For, for maximum outcomes, the STS also has been queried, and it's actually the best outcomes for, for mortality, for survival, as well as to get a successful repair, is if you find a surgeon and a center that do a lot. And what, by that, I mean specifically the surgeon should do, you know, more than 25 to 30 mitral valve repairs a year. And the center, the hospital, should have an experience of at least over 75 mitral valve operations per year. And that's the way to assure you're going to get a good repair and great outcomes. 
Dr. Acker, great points. Let's move on to the fourth consideration, which is all about shared decision-making. Why is it important for patients to work with not only their physician, but the entire medical team when planning their operation? It's really important that you have a, a, a heart team working for you one that has multidisciplinary points of view and expertise from a cardiologist, an echocardiographer, the surgeon, the anesthesiologist. And really, it's all about that team coming up with shared decision-making about you, what's best for you. And that will assure good decisions and good outcomes. Dr. Acker, I really appreciate those comments. I'm curious to know, is it important for the patients to feel empowered, to ask questions, to their potential surgeons about their treatment. Great point, Adam. Um, You know, in the end, it is about you. And you must feel empowered to ask the hard questions, to do the research, to engage your surgeon as well as the multidisciplinary team and make sure that it's a good fit for you, that you feel comfortable. So absolutely, the empowerment of the patient is paramount. Dr. Ibrahim, over to you for the fifth and final consideration, which is... What should patients know about the lifetime management of mitral valve disease? You know, I think uh, people are living longer. Uh, Patients with mitral valve disease can be young. And so the question uh, comes up of of how to manage their valve over a long period of time. Um, I think what's important is to sit down and form a plan for how to attack this disease over the course of your lifetime. And that will correspond to the, the priorities that you have at that point. For a patient who is young, valve repair has several benefits in allowing superior valve performance and freedom from valve-related complications, for example, during pregnancy. Um, And later on, uh, the management of replacement valves may become relevant with tissue and mechanical options for uh, the appropriate age patient. And so I think the key is to work with uh, a a specialist valve surgeon to come up with a plan that serves your, your needs over your lifetime. Dr. Ibrahim, I love the point about having a plan for the lifetime management of mitral valve disease. I'm sure patients are wondering about maybe some of the newer transcatheter techniques What might patients want to know about transcatheter therapies for maybe their second or even third procedure? Yeah, this is a a great point. It's uh, an area that is rapidly evolving. Um, These uh, transcatheter techniques can involve uh, repair, i.e. mitra clip, um, of previously surgically repaired valves or replacement in either previous full ring repairs or previous uh, tissue valve replacements. Um, They offer several advantages in the sense that they um, do not involve repeat uh, incisions and and open heart surgery, but they have significant limitations and they are already available to some patients who have specific anatomies. And you should discuss this with your valve surgeon to come up with a conclusion as to whether this is something that will be beneficial to you or not. And with those very important insights, we're going to wrap up today's session about the top five considerations for mitral valve surgery patients. Thanks for being here, Dr. Acker. It's been great speaking with you, Adam. Thanks, Dr. Ibrahim. Thank you, Adam. Hi, everybody. It's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit parkvalvesurgery.com.